Well, very soon we will put away all the Christmas decorations and the nativity scene, and the little Lord Jesus will be um, consigned to the basement for another year until Christmas comes back around. And um, it's just too bad because, you know, when we think about this, the, the, the Jesus, the infant Savior, we can think about God's tender love for us. It's a great symbol of, of his love. And many of the saints were dedicated and loved Jesus as, a, as an infant. Saints like Francis of Assisi, he was the first one 800 years ago to even think about setting up a nativity scene. And so thanks to him, that's why we have these in our churches and in our homes. Or saints like uh, St. Gerard Magella. I heard this story about him recently, and I don't know all the details, but he was, as a young man, he was a servant of the bishop, and the bishop was apparently a hard man to love, and he had a rather uh, bad temper, or he could easily get upset. And Gerard was running um, an errand for him when he was at the well at the city, and the key to the bishop's house fell into the well. And he thought to himself, oh no, this is not going to go well. So somewhere he got an uh, image of the infant Jesus. I don't know if it was about this size or what. And he tied a cord around this, the little statue, and he lowered it down. At this point, people are gathering around to see what's going to happen. And he lowered down the Lord Jesus, and then he pulled it back up, and right hooked to his hand was the key to the bishop's house. And uh, that's probably not a good idea. And if you're going to do that, though, please don't do it with our um, image of Jesus. But it, it was because he had such a great devotion, and he knew that God would take care of those who love him. And I think that when we look upon this little image, we can think about God's love because if you think about this for a second, if we just forget all that we know about our Christian faith and we ask ourselves, how could God show us his love? And we could think he, the same way he did it in the Old Covenant, by sending prophets to speak to us, by protecting his people, by doing amazing miracles and works of wonder. But we would never, ever think that God would send his son to be born of a virgin, to be born in a miserable situation, to be born poor, and to take on our miseries, and to live our human life, and to offer his life on the cross for our sake. We would never think about that. And yet, not only has God thought of it, he has done it in Jesus Christ. And that's why this image is so precious to us because it shows us this is how much God loves us. Yeah, we have the cross, which is a great image of Christ's love. Greater love has no one than this to lay down his life on a, the cross. But even the, the image of Christ the child shows us God's immense love. So we should be like the, the Magi who come to adore Jesus, come to adore him and offer him our worship. When we put Jesus in the center of our lives and we offer him our worship, it means that we, we resist all forms of idolatry. And idolatry is putting something else in the place of God. And it's such a temptation today. We are so tempted to idolatry in different forms. We are tempted to place ourselves in God's place. That's the most common one. But we are also tempted to chase power and try to be important or fame or we, we seek money over all things or we have our comfortable lives and pleasure we seek above all things. All of these things are a form of idolatry. But if we place Jesus in the center of our lives and we offer him our worship, then we will resist those forms of idolatry and focus our lives on Jesus, true God and true man, the important part of our life. The Magi, when they came to see Jesus, they saw a little child, but they knew by faith that he was true God and they adored him. Uh, Herod, he was a hypocrite, 
and he didn't want to come to adore Jesus. We, when we come to Mass every week, we, not only, we don't see an infant before us, we see Jesus in the Eucharist. And not only is his divinity hidden underneath his humanity, but also his humanity is, his divinity and his humanity are hidden underneath the forms of bread and wine. So it takes faith to, for us to worship him and for us to put him in the center of our lives. And so today as we celebrate this feast, like the wise men who brought the gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh, we can bring to Jesus the gold of our lives, given to him freely out of love. We can offer to him the frankincense of our prayers offered for his, in thanksgiving and, and for his glory. And then we can offer him the myrrh of our affectionate love for him. So when we come today and every day and every every week, we can adore Jesus and put him in the center of our lives. So we'll have to say goodbye for now to um, our little Lord, but you have my permission that if you want to keep up your nativity set for a little bit longer at your house, you can do so. And if you want to keep it up all year round, all the better. What's wrong with that? That's a good way to think about how much God loves us, that he sent us his only son.